Hey guys, it's Sunday, February 7th, and this is your update. I wonder, do you guys like seeing different towels every time? So I told you guys I wasn't going to be able to tell you all the cool stuff I was doing in the city today, and that's because I'm not in the city today. Yeah, uh, all that excitement, forget about it. See, Hana's identity got stolen on Friday along with $500, so all credit cards had to be cancelled, and lots of trauma and bad stuff. So we're staying in, but that's okay, we're still having a good time. We'll just go to the city some other weekend. Well, it was my dad's 56th birthday last week. Congratulations to you, Dad. You are old. And I got him tickets to see the complete works of Shakespeare Bridge. So he and my mom did that last night, and I'm waiting to hear how they liked it. But I had a theater adventure of my own. I was working last night, and I was working the Broadway Stars Scholarship Benefit Concert, which I really didn't expect to be all that cool. I figured it would be mostly Hofstra alum, despite the Broadway Stars part of the title. And, you know, no one I've ever actually heard of. But boy was I wrong, because I got to meet Ron Bomer. None of you freaking know who he is. Yes. Ron Bomer is probably best known as a theater guy with a lot of talent, but who always ends up in mediocre shows, like the one last night. He got a lot of his fan base, I believe, from when he replaced Isla Sills in The Scarlet Pimpernel. But otherwise, he's mostly known as being in okay roles and okay shows and national tours and things like that. You know, Angel Raw and Les Mis, he, uh, he was in Phantom, he was Joe Gillis in Sunset Boulevard. I mean, they're not bad roles, but it's not like a breakthrough part or anything, and it's just sort of like, okay, it's an okay show, but he's really good in it. Nonetheless, the man has talent, and he was definitely the most talented guy there. Or at least the hottest, according to Hannah, who talked all night about how much she wants to get him in the sack. And it went something like this. Emily, where's Ron Bulmer? Backstage, Hana, I don't know. I don't care about the balding fat tenor. Dude, what do you want me to do about this? Ah, uh, he's hot. Brr. But yes, in person, Mr. Bulmer is a very attractive man. And I did actually get to get his autograph, and I actually got a picture with him, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But Hana knows how to stalk people out in parking lots successfully, uh, so we waited around until everyone else was gone and then pounced on him before he got in his car. Yay. Like I said, said with all things Ron Bomer, the show itself was mediocre. He was great, but it was sort of, you know, a show that hits only the songs that everyone has pretty much heard of. It was catered to a bunch of rich old people to try and give them money to the school, which is awesome, because they did. Not that I'm getting any of the money. Oh no, it's going to the president. It's a scholarship for the president, and you know it's true. Songs everyone's heard of? Mostly Andrew Lloyd Webber. No Sondheim, unless you include West Side Story, but since he didn't write the music here, I'm not going to include it. Heck, it didn't even have any of Sondheim's descendants, like Jason Robert Brown or Adam Mattel. And as far as their music goes, Jason Robert Brown certainly is mostly rather unoffensive to the modern theater audience. At least his lyrics tend to be. And his melodies are usually a little bit on the pop side. But no, it was only stuff that, even if you're not acquainted with theater, you heard a lot. Memory from Cats, because, you know, there are no other songs in that show, at least I wish. You got uh, a whole sequence from Fan of the Opera, yay. Don't Rain on My Parade, Funny Girl, On My Own, Les Mis, Really, Really Poorly, Bring Him Home, Also Les Mis, Something's Coming, West Side Story. That actually is a show with a lot more songs, but, you know, that's a pretty standard one. Everyone's pretty much heard it. That one was actually sung by Mr. Bomer, and he did a really great job. And then you also have songs like Man of La Mancha. That was also Mr. Bomer accompanied it, of course. And that was really good, but he's way, way, way too young to be singing Don Quixote. I guess you could argue that Brian Stokes Mitchell was also way too young to do Don Quixote in the revival, and I guess I can buy that argument, but I kind of feel like he pulled it off a little bit better. But I'm willing to take arguments for or against on that one. Of course, they did sing other sh songs in the show, things like I Could Have Danced All Night from My Fair Lady, All That Jazz from Chicago, and oh, God bless it, they did Seasons of Love from Rent. I hate Rent. I actually can stand this song because it's kind of lyrical and pretty and, you know, has some kind of message that isn't totally retarded like the rest of the show, but come on, can we move on as a culture and just stop listening to this garbage? 
Also at the show, since it was a benefit that was honoring a Hofstra alum who's also a Broadway producer, they were singing some songs from his new show, Dr. Zhivago, which is opening in Australia because no one in their right mind is going to open it here. I'm serious, guys. The stuff they did, it was bland, it was boring, it was cliched, and damn it, I write better than that. How come I can't get a composer and a job? But of course, since Mr. Bowman was the best part about this show, he spent most of it not being in it. Which is why Hana was bitching at me the whole time, but whatever. So yes, we met him, and I got his autograph, and I got my picture taken with him, and he liked my bag. Let me show you my bag. Look at my bag! This is a birthday present for my 18th birthday from my Annie Suzanne, and thank you! You helped me with Ron Bomer. He has a reputation as a very nice man, and yes, he actually is a very nice man. He even held my purse while I was fumbling around for a pen and to help Hana get his autograph and all sorts of other stuff. I don't know what it is about stars, or maybe this is just with me, what the few that I've met, We'll actually try to have a conversation, but they're the one doing most of the conversing. For example, I told Mr. Bomer that I was from Portland, Oregon, and he'd actually been there and was talking about how nice it was. The only thing I could really say was, yeah, Portland's really nice. It's nice. Yeah, it's, it's small. I don't know why that is. I just can't think when there's famous-ish people around. And it wasn't like with Douglas Sills where I couldn't even remember to say my own name. I mean, I guess that's an improvement, and I'm not sure what it is. I am totally, totally aware that these are normal people, and I definitely don't freak out about it, but I just can't talk. Maybe I never can. The worst part about meeting stars, though, and while you're trying to seem really normal and really cool and like, oh yeah, this is no big deal, I meet you people all the time, is that while you're trying and failing to converse with them, you have this awful inner monologue going in your head. Mine goes something like this. God, I'm talking to Ron freaking Bomer. Ron Bomer's talking to me, and he's holding my purse. Oh my god, he's holding... Shit, Emily, there's a pad on top of your purse. Close the purse, damn it! Yeah, I guess there, uh, there are probably worse things than advertising to men of the world who happen to be on Broadway that, yes, I am a young woman of menstruating age, but... No, I can't think of anything that's worse than that. So among the other things we talked about, we asked what Mr. Bomer had been doing. And recently, he was playing the role of father in Ragtime. Except it closed, so I can't frickin' see him in it. And he apologized profusely for that, but obviously it's not his fault. I'm sure he'd rather be working there, too. I throw this milk jug in rage. Mmm. It's empty, don't worry. Yep, so here's the picture I promised with me and Mr. Bomer. I didn't have my camera on me because I wasn't really expecting that there'd be anyone cool there, and I usually just don't carry that in my purse to work. It's bulky, and I live in terror of it getting stolen or me losing it because I'm an idiot. Anyway, you get to see me here dressed up like an Eskimo because it was 23 freaking degrees outside. So I told you guys last weekend that I was going to be really, really busy this weekend, and actually that's not true. To my own shock and awe, I actually got all my homework done on Friday afternoon. And yay, that was cool, and I actually got to relax this weekend, which made a nice change, because by Thursday, even though it's only the second week of school, I was totally exhausted. So I'm not sure how I'm going to survive the whole semester. But the good news about that is I don't have work for another at least two weeks. The bad news about that is I don't have work for at least another two weeks. Oh, money, how I'm going to miss having you. But anyway, that's sort of your deal for this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed my insanity with Mr. Bomer. And I'm sure I'll talk to you all soon. More news on Portland later. Now, the bleak and unbearable world Thou art base and debauched as can be And the night with his banners all bravely unfurled Now hurls down his gauntlet to thee